How often should an artist release music? You see, there's no definitive answer. No right, no wrong answer. Because ultimately, it's in the artist's hands. They can decide how much or how little music they release. Or well, in some cases, that power is taken away from them. But that's a topic for a different video. There are so many factors that come with releasing music that there's no correct benchmark for how often an artist should be releasing. I mean, personal issues being right at the forefront. Just look at Earl Sweatshirt. Just as Odd Future were blown up, he was sent to a Simone boarding school by his mother, meaning he only had one appearance on Odd Future's classic tape, Odd Future Volume 2. Writer's Block has been mentioned by some of the most prolific artists of all time, and it's a difficult thing to overcome and can delay new music for years upon years. Or I mean, you can take an example like Jay-Z who is just that comfortable now that he has no reason to release any new music. But with all that being said, I thought it would be fun to explore the pros and cons of different release schedules, from the consistent, to the regular, to the infrequent. Let's start with consistent, and I think there's a perfect option to talk about here. Let's start with future, you all know him. Well in between 2014 and 2020 he released 7 studio albums, 1 collaborative album, 4 mixtapes, 4 collaborative mixtapes and 2 EPs, which means he was averaging around 2 to 3 projects a year. Which is a crazy amount for an artist of his size. And I mean in 2017 he released two albums in the space of a week. So what are the advantages of this? Well I mean this constant output of projects made Future a household name. Someone who is now a worldwide superstar. More product, more exposure, more product, more touring, more product, more merch, more product, more sales, more product, more money. It's also about momentum. Just look at Future for example. The success of Monster led into the success of DS2, which led into the success of What A Time To Be Alive. This constant release of amazing albums made Future into a commercial powerhouse, and one of the most critically acclaimed trap artists of all time. Look at it this way, if Future took a three year break after the release of DS2, do you think the same amount of hype and success would still be there? Definitely not. But this constant release of music has also had its fair share of negative impact on Future's career. The first one is expectation. At this point in his career, Future is just expected to release new music every year, even if he isn't in the right space. And the other thing is that because he's released so much music, a lot of it doesn't quite get the love it deserves. Take for example, The Wizard and let's say Hendrix. They are two albums that deserve to be talked about a lot more. But because of the oversaturation of music, they don't get brought up nowhere near enough. Feels like people just move on to the next project so quickly, not giving the music time to breathe. Not allowing Future's albums to really be digested until years later. That's why nowadays you see a lot of people going back to an artist's more overlooked work and calling it underrated. And then think about an artist's career. Generally, you would expect them to grow and improve as each project, but if an artist releases new music every five to six months, chances are there'll be constant dips and peaks, as a quality of music can be sustainable. But then you've got to look at it from the perspective of an underground artist, and the factors are just much different. With how little streaming services are paying artists nowadays, consistent output is the only way for these underground artists to actually make a living off their art. And a lot of the time, it does mean the quality is diminished. As I said, trying to keep up a level of quality is borderline impossible if you're releasing a project every three months. But then, on the other side, you have an artist like Baldy James who has released 10 projects over the last three years and well, he's released some of the best work of the decade so far. So, it is just two sides of a coin, and there's many benefits and disadvantages to a consistent release schedule. How about we look at the infrequent release schedule? And there's no better example to look at than Kendrick Lamar. He was always consistent with releasing music, up until his new album Mr Morale and the Big Steppers which came out almost 5 years since the release of Damn. Now this is where my main problem lies with this kind of schedule. It's expectations. And expectations can honestly ruin how you receive music. And I'm a victim of that. Because on first listen I was honestly disappointed with this album. And now it's one of my favourite records of the decade so far. The album just wasn't what I was expecting in the slightest. But that was always going to be the case after a five year wait. And I mean, I can see the same thing happening with Frank Ocean whenever he decides to finally release a new album. I can guarantee most people will feel let down on first listen, but it'll probably grow on them over time. But this sort of time between albums does also have its benefits. Does Mr Morale sound anything like Damn? 
very rarely. There's time between music allows an artist to develop and grow, to find a new sound, to explore new ideas, to work with different sound palettes. And chances are, you'll get something new and interesting at the end of all this. And even if you aren't a fan, at least the music won't be stale. But let's be real here, how many artists could really pull off a 5 year in between albums and still maintain hype and attention? Only the upper echelon of artists, not many artists can afford to do this, and for some, it would probably derail their career. And then I thought it'd be fun to explore what is known as the benchmark of releasing music, which is the regular two year period. This has been cited for a long time now as the somewhat perfect schedule when it comes to releasing music. And I think there's no better example over the past decade than Tyler the Creator who has stuck to this release schedule since 2009. And to say it has worked for him would be a huge understatement as we've witnessed this crazy musical development as each project has passed. Watching him go from Goblin to Ego is just some next level artistic development. And this two year period has been a huge factor in that as he has allowed himself to maintain hype and momentum while also leaving just enough time for him to incorporate new ideas and develop a new sound. I mean Wolf and Flower Boy were only 4 years apart, as was Cherry Bomb and Igor. Completely different albums that were perfectly developed due to this period in between recording. Plus, I know 2 years seems like a long way, but in the grandest scheme of things, it's nothing. Just look at how much hype Playboy Kite has for his new album, despite a whole lot of red dropping 2 years ago. This small period of time allows fans to get excited for your next release while also giving your previous work time to breathe and sit with the audience. But once again, this comes with expectation. If Tyler decides to skip 2023 due to personal issues, writer's block or so on and so forth, some fans would 100% kick up a fuss because they feel they're entitled to a new Tyler project every two years. But there is also a reason why this is known as the benchmark because it has the most benefits, especially for already established artists. But that is why you have to look at it from two different perspectives, because this probably isn't the best for artists who are making a living from music. This constant release cycle suits their needs much better. So that is why there is no true answer to how often an artist should release music. Labels, personal issues and the industry at large can all delay music releasing. I think the constant releasing is best for artists who are trying to make a name for themselves. As long as they can keep up a level of quality as each project passes. I think the regular two year period works best for established artists to keep momentum but also develop their craft and sound. And as I said earlier, I think only a few artists in the music industry can really take a long break without damaging their career in some sort of way. Anyway, I thought it'd be a fun discussion to have and I hope you enjoyed or whatever. I appreciate any support in the video and let me know in the comments how often you think an artist should be releasing new music. Thank you.